Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and with me today is the all new Aventon Pace 500. Now this is the newest generation of Aventon's original e-bike. It's their best selling e-bike and it's quite honestly one of the most highly recommended affordable e-bikes we've ever reviewed at electricbikereport.com. So will this newest generation of the Pace 500 live up to the reputation of that original bike? We're gonna put it to the test today to find out and see how it performs in the real world. So stick with us. So the Pace 500 is a Venton's electric cruiser bike, and it, it very much ticks all of the boxes you'd be looking for in a good cruiser. It's got a nice upright riding position. This is the step-through version of the frame. It's got a lot of the same features that we saw in the old Pace 500, the things that we really liked about that bike. The fact that it's a little bit more of a compact cruiser bike, that it would do it as nicely as an electric commuter bike as well because it has bosses for a rear rack and mounting points for fenders if you choose to do some commuting on this bike. But there's been some changes to this thing, changes that we didn't see on the old Pace 500. The biggest of those is going to be the bike's overall look. They've now sunk the battery inside the down tube of the frame. It's got a lot of the nice upgraded features we've seen in Aventon's newest generation of e-bikes, features like these really cool sunk in uh, integrated rear tail lights. It's also got the new upgraded full color LCD display, which we've loved on some of Aventon's newest e-bikes. And it's really retained that very affordable price point of, of right around 16 or $1,700 MSRP. It's a really awesome e-bike and I love how they've updated the looks. But for me, what's really important is that they've retained the old Pace 500's handling. That bike handled really lightly, really nimbly. It just was very intuitive to throw your leg over it and start riding. And this bike feels exactly like that. What's very interesting is as Aventon is releasing their newest generation of bikes, we've been seeing a lot of similarities between this and then another bike that we've recently seen released, the Aventon Solterra. And that's in the looks department. That ovalized down tube with the integrated battery looks a lot like what we saw in the Solterra. We're also seeing almost the exact same front fork. It's a really nice looking e-bike. One thing that's also new about this is that this thing comes now with a 614.4 watt hour battery as opposed to the old Pace 500's 556 watt hour battery. So you're getting about a 10% increase in battery life and we actually were able to see that result in our range testing which we'll get into a little bit later in this video. You've still got those nice swept back handlebars. This is the step through version of the frame and it has a very nice and low step over height. It's gonna be very easy to get on and off of for people who are concerned about throwing their leg over a top tube. You're also getting some Tektro E350 hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. We're putting those to the test today as well. And then in addition to that, you're also getting a Shimano Altus seven speed drivetrain, which is really just kind of the workhorse drivetrain of the affordable e-bike category. All in, they've done a really nice job specking this e-bike out. And I'm so happy to see that they haven't just retained the qualities we loved about the Pace 500. They've taken all these little things that they've implemented on Aventon's newest e-bikes, added to this thing and just made a good bike even better. So it's a really, really great e-bike. So to get an idea of how the new generation of the Pace 500 comes to a stop, we're going to put it through a braking test where we bring the bike up to 20 miles an hour five times and then slam on the brakes as hard as possible. The average stopping distance is the bike's result. Now this bike is spec with a set of Tektro HD E350E hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. So it's going to be a good braking setup. It's also got a set of Kenda tires with a semi-slick tread that's going to grip the ground fairly well and it's got a good geometry so I have high hopes for how the Pace 500 is going to perform but let's see how it works in the real world. The Pace 
500 did very, very well in our braking test, coming to a stop in an average distance of 11 feet and 11 inches, which is several feet better than the current average of all the bikes we've put through this review, which sits at about 15 feet, eight inches. Those Tektro brakes did a really awesome job of controlling the stopping. The bike had really great modulation, which means I could control with the brake lever exactly how far hard the brakes were grabbing. And these Canada tires did an awesome job of gripping the asphalt even when they began to skid. So really, really great result from the Pace 500 in our braking test. Battery life is one of the departments of testing where we actually saw a very measured improvement over the old Pace 500. And that's largely due to the fact that Aventon is now stocking this bike with a 614.4 watt hour battery, which is about 10% larger than the 556 watt hour battery that we saw on the old Pace 500. And how that worked out is then in our range testing, which we did two different range tests, one in PAS3 and one in PAS5, we saw a range of 57.75 miles in the PAS3 test, and then a range of 27.88 miles in our PAS5 test. Now, especially in PAS3 is where we're seeing a very large improvement over the old bike, which we saw in PAS1 actually do a range of about 51 miles. And that's a result that we've got consistently over two different Pace 500 range tests in PAS1. So that's a good solid improvement in range. And not to mention, we're actually doing the testing on a pedal assist level that's much higher than what we used to previously used to do it on, meaning that this 500 watt motor should be asking more of that battery. It really speaks volumes to how efficiently this bike pedals and how efficiently it uses that 614.4 watt hour battery. So all in, if range is one of the big considerations that you're thinking about when buying an e-bike, the Pace 500 is a really smart bike to take a look at. The Pace 500 is named for its namesake 500 watt rear hub motor, which traditionally has been very snappy and very fast. It was one of the more quick 500 watt rear hub motors that we have reviewed here at Electric Bike Report. And I'm happy to report that this generation of the Pace 500 has retained that kind of really quick and fast personality that we really loved about the old bike. One thing that we have noticed though is that on starts, this bike seems a little bit more subdued, a little bit more controlled feeling than the old bike. It's not that the old bike was unsafe, but it appears that Aventon maybe has been taking some steps to make sure that this thing just has a nice launch control when you're starting from a dead stop. And it's very, very nice to see that. It makes the bike just a little bit safer, a little bit easier to control for newer riders. But this bike is still very, very fast. Once you get off the line and start rolling, it has no problem reaching its maximum motor assisted speeds. This bike shipped to us as a class two e-bike, meaning it has a throttle and five levels of pedal assistance, all of which is limited to 20 miles an hour. But if you do want something that goes a little bit faster, you can increase the maximum pedal assistance speed on this to 27 miles an hour, which would make it a class three e-bike. For the purpose of our testing, because we did a lot of it on bike paths, we kept this bike as a class two, but I have ridden it as a class three and it is very, very fun and very, very fast and it feels a lot like that old Pace 500. So huge thumb, thumbs up to Aventon for keeping that really fast personality that we loved about the old bike in this newest generation. But to get an idea of how this bike performs in each of its five pedal assistance levels, we put it through a number of tests on our electric bike report circuit. How we did this is we did one lap with no help from the motor at all, just us pedaling the bike. And then we successively increased the power from PS1 to PS5. And what that resulted in this bike was some very interesting things that we've learned about it. The first being is that this thing pedals very efficiently and that's evidenced by the 14.1 mile an hour average speed around our circuit test with no help from the motor at all. That's very fast, especially when compared to some of the other bikes we've reviewed around the electric bike report circuit. But that also made some very interesting, uh, an interesting shape on our graph, which I'm sure you're seeing on the screen right now you're gonna kinda of get this look like this, where that first no PAS lap was actually faster than the first two laps with motor assistance in PAS1 and PAS2. Now, this kind of reveals that there are a lot of variables that go on to our testing, because we are testing in the real world. And I spoke with the rider that actually conducted this test, and what he says is that he thinks it was a mix of perceived exertion and the fact that it was windy that day. 
He just expected that on a lap with no help from the motor at all, he was gonna have to give it a little bit more physical exertion. And then once that motor kicked in on PS one and two, he backed off a little bit and that actually yielded some slightly slower lap times than the lap with no help from the motor at all. But all in, this is a very nice performing e-bike, especially once you get it into PS three and above. It's super comfy, it's super fast, and it does exactly what you'd want it to do. One of the biggest highlights of the Pace 500 for me has always been its handling. It's got a very nice and light and neutral handling profile. Aventon does build this as their electric cruiser bike. And while a lot of electric cruiser bikes are very big and long and have these giant sweeping kind of classic style handlebars, this bike is not that. It's very much more compact. It's got a lighter frame. It's got kind of a little bit more straight handlebars. It still gives you a very nice upright riding position that's very comfortable with a very broad padded cruiser style seat but the bike just handles a little bit more on the side of what a commuter bike does. It's got a little bit of a quicker handling, but it's just really, really nice and light feeling to ride. It's a really great handling e-bike. The bike's cockpit though, is where we're gonna start to see a lot of the new improvements of this newest generation of Aventon e-bikes. Aventon's done a really, really great job of focusing on all these very small details that at first glance are easy to gloss over, but once you start spending time on the bike, you really begin to appreciate. The biggest for me is its full color LCD screen. Now this screen gives you everything that you'd want from a screen. It's very easy to read. It's got all of the relevant metrics that you wanna know about riding. Like it's got a really great battery readout that reads out in percentages instead of icons, which is super important when you're trying to stretch the life of your bike's battery. And then it also has a big, nice display that's easy to read for distance and speed and elapsed time and things like that. But it also has some cool additional extras like how many kilograms of CO2 you've saved by, by choosing an e-bike over a car, or even how many trees you've saved. They're not exactly important features to have, but they're just cool, especially on this price point of affordable e-bike. It's something that we don't see very often. They also have a really, really nice touchpad display that's on the left-hand side. You don't have to do like any game style cheat codes to get the lights on or to change settings. It's all very easy to do. They've got plenty of buttons and it's very intuitive. There's also a really nice thumb style throttle and then the grips are these really great ergonomic lock-on grips that don't slide underneath you. They grip to your hands really well, even when they're sweaty. If you've watched any of our reviews, you know I'm a stickler for grips and I really, really like these grips on this bike. Overall, the handling and the cockpit experience, I just really love about the Pace 500. Again, this is another department where you're seeing a bike that was already very good in the previous generation of the Pace 500, and Aventon has just made some very small tweaks to make that good bike even better. So really, really big thumbs up to them for how they've made this bike handle. So to get an idea of how well the Pace 500 climbs uphill, we've brought it out to our Test Hill Hellhole. Now Hellhole is a third of a mile long, it's 12% gradient on average, it is very steep and very long, and it is a very big hill that's going to challenge this 500 watt rear hub motor. Now we're gonna do two tests on this hill, one in PAS5 with the help of my legs, and the second with using just the throttle. Now that throttle only test is where I think we may see this bike have some trouble because that's not at all uncommon for the 500 watt rear hub motor bikes. It's usually just kind of a toss up whether or not they actually make it up on throttle power alone. So we're gonna put it to the test and see how it performs. All right, so this is the throttle only test of the new generation Pace 500. So this is the 500 watt rear hub motor. So gonna be interesting to see how well it does. It is not at all uncommon to have 500 watt motors not make this hill and that's simply a function of just how steep it is. So you're definitely seeing some slowing. No overt struggling from the motor, just a little bit of slowing in speed. She's doing all right. Definitely seeing slowing though right there. Now starting to feel struggling from the motor. I think we're about gonna have to call it. Once we go below, yeah, that's it. There we are. No cigar on the throttle only test. All right, now for the PAS5. Now for the PAS5 version of the hill test.
This is a really nice pedaling e-bike. Which means it's going to be fairly efficient going up this hill. And even though it didn't make it on throttle only, I have a lot of confidence it's going to make it in PAS5. And that's even without me adding really much force. And that's just a function of torque. So it does not take a whole lot of effort from my legs to just really multiply the amount of torque the motor is capable of. It's something I've noticed after testing a lot of these 500 watt e-bikes, especially the ones that don't make it up this hill and the throttle only is, all it takes is just a little pedaling and the bike does just fine. It's the biggest reason I never really dock these bikes for not making it in the throttle test. Just a super easy ride to the top. Almost no effort from me. We're done. The Pace 500 did fairly well up our test hill hellhole. And in PAS 5, with a little bit of help from my legs, it made it to the top in one minute and 37 seconds with an average speed of 11.2 miles per hour. But it was in the throttle only test where we suspected that this bike has, might have some issues is where it had some issues on our hill. Made it about a third of the way up before it stopped and couldn't go any further. And before you guys use that result to peg this thing as a poor climbing e-bike, I wanna add some context to it. Mostly two things. One, is that we chose this hill specifically because it was steep enough and long enough to push e-bikes to their limits and make them fail. And two, it is not at all uncommon for us to see a 500 watt rear hub motor fail on this hill. And in fact, this bike failed about a third of the way up where pretty much most of the 500 watt rear hub motor bikes that we review, if they're gonna fail, they fail right there. So it's a fairly standard result. We're not going to probably be riding this bike very often on a hill like this. It doesn't at all mean it's a poorly climbing e-bike. It climbs just fine up anything else. And one thing I will say from riding it is that it takes almost no effort out of your legs to make this thing go uphill. You just pedal a little bit and it's going to make it. It made it just fine on the PAS5 version of the test. I was able to talk the whole way up. So it's still a good climbing e-bike. You might just have to pedal on the steeper stuff. The Pace 500 is Aventon's original e-bike. Now, Aventon hasn't always made e-bikes. They actually started making traditional non-motorized bicycles. And when the Pace 500 was released several years ago, it actually won a bunch of design awards because of the fact that it just looked really nice. It was, it kind of broke the mold of what you would expect from an affordable e-bike. And on top of that, on top of it just looking nice, Aventon actually made a really, really nice riding bike. It was fast, it was fun, it was lightweight, the handling was spot on. So when you see a company like Aventon trying to remake one of their flagship models, not just their flagship, but this is actually Aventon's best selling e-bike according to them. You kind of are running the risk when you do that of making a good bike just a little bit worse because you've made it more complicated or you've tried to cram too many features into it. But that's not what Aventon has done here. With this model of the Pace 500, this most recent generation, Aventon has managed to make a very good bike even better. And how they've done that, just like with all of the recent new generation launches of e-bikes that we've seen from Aventon recently, is they've done a great job of focusing on aesthetics and then all the little details that all added up are gonna make for a really nice riding experience. I personally love the looks of the new Pace 500. I really liked how the old Pace 500 looked, but this new one is just very clean. I love that they've integrated the battery very nicely and they've put a really cool looking front fork on there. In addition to that, the riding experience because of the new LCD display, that new touchpad, the new throttle, all those new little details added up. It's just a really nice bike to ride. And they've done a great job of maintaining all of those things that we loved about the old bike, the handling, the speed. 
all in, I've really enjoyed riding and reviewing the Pace 500. It is still going to be one of mo my most highly recommended affordable e-bikes on the market today. And if you've enjoyed watching this video, be sure to subscribe and like the Electric Bike Report channel for more updates from Aventon and the other brands that we've covered. And if you wanna know more about the new generation of the Pace 500, be sure to click the link in the description below this video for more detailed written review that also includes all the data that we've collected on the bike. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thank you so much for watching.